Okay, in this video I will introduce the concept of measurable functions. So the concept starts with the measure space. Uh, a measure space is a triple of objects, uh, a universal set X, a sigma algebra F, and a measure M, sigma additive measure on it. So this is a measure space, which is where F sigma algebra, M is a sigma additive measure, which in general may live on a smaller ring, on a smaller ring F0. Now, function, function, uh, which lives on this universal set X with values in real numbers, uh, we call this function measurable. If every set like that, every set like that, belongs to the sigma algebra f. Every set like that, uh, that's the definition of that set. Basically, this is a pre-image of the... <coughs> this is a pre-image of the uh, half open, half infinite interval, like this. And that's the definition of the pre-image, if you don't remember that. Uh, in this video, I will prove the following lemma, which gives you equivalent characterizations of measurable functions. Uh, so the lemma says the following statements are equivalent. Uh, statement number one, it says that the sets like that um, belong to the sigma algebra for every real number C. By the way, uh, that's the piece which I forgot to mention here. A function called measurable, when the pre-image is like that, belongs to the sigma algebra for every real number C. <clears throat> uh, equivalently, you can say that this kind of sets belong to the sigma algebra for all real number C. Equivalently, you can say that this sets belong to the sigma algebra F for every C or this kind of sets belongs belong to F for every number C. So the lemma says that in fact you can equivalently describe measurable function by requiring any type of sets, any type of sets like this, to be in sigma algebra f for any real number c. And all of these requirements will be equivalent, and the function will be measurable in this case. In fact, there is a fifth part in this lemma, which is also equivalent to the first four, which says that <clears throat> equivalently, you can require that the pre-image of every Borel subset of your real line is in your sigma algebra f is measurable. All of these five statements equivalent, and all of these five statements later on will be used, or you can use them, when you work with measurable functions. Now, we will prove the lemma. Here's the proof. Like it always, like it often happens when you prove a a series of equivalent statements, we will do a series of circular implications. So first we'll look at this implication, 1 implies 2. This kind of implication follows immediately from the identity between sets like this, that the set of f b or equal and c is, a, is equal to the countable intersection of the sets like this. Um, I'm not going to check this identity, I'm going to just use it. Uh, now, the extra co the other thing which I have to mention is that actually because this is a sigma algebra, it is also closed under countable union. We know that in general, sigma rings, which are the collection of subsets closed under countable union, not necessarily closed under countable intersection, but if you're looking at sigma algebra, then it will be closed under countable intersection as well. That's why, because every element, this every set like this, is an element of your sigma algebra. That's the assumption in one, and that's why the intersection of those, which is the pre-image in the second statement, also will be the element of sigma algebra. And that finishes this implication one to two. Two to three, it's even easier because all you have to mention is this relation between pre-images, the collection of all x points where f less than c, it's the complement of the collection of those points where f bigger or equal than c. This is the 
measurable, so the set difference is also measurable, and that's why this is measurable. And when I say measurable, this I just mean that this set belongs to this original given sigma algebra. 3 to 4, 3 to 4 is just based on this identity. That the collection of points where f less or equal than c is a countable intersection of points where f less or equal than c plus 1 on n. Again, because my sigma algebra is closed under countable intersection, we done. The countable intersection of measurable sets will be a measurable set. And that finishes this implication. Uh, now, next step, uh, we will be proving that actually these statements 1 to 4, these statements 1 to 4 combined together imply 5. So we will prove something like this. This is almost identical to just simply statement 4 implies 5 because in fact you can, using a similar technique, you can reverse all of these implications backwards. Or in fact you can actually imply 1 from 4 with the, this sort of complementing identity. Uh, right, so in order to show that actually the pre-image of every Borel set will be also measurable given you have uh, these four statements. Uh, I'll consider the following collection of subsets of a real line. These, these are the all subsets whose pre-images are measurable. Now, first thing I observe is that actually if you take the pre-image of half open interval, this is the intersection of these two sets, which are by the assumption that we have statements 1, 2, 4 true, in fact we only need the statement 2 and 3 for that, will be a measurable set and that's why that's why every half open interval in fact will be inside this collection. The second thing which I will observe is that actually this collection will be a sigma ring and that is because if I have a objects like this, if I have a subsets A, B, sorry, if I have if I have subsets a, b, and a sub n in this collection R, then by this simple observation that, for instance, the pre-image freely interchangeable with the union of sets, we conclude that the pre-image of the union of the sets a and b, it's the union of individual pre-images, each of them individually is measurable because they, come, they have come from R, and that's why the union is also measurable, and so that's, that's how we see that the union of A and B is in R. By the similar identity for the set difference, you conclude that the you conclude that the the set difference is also in R. And by using the identity like for the union like this, but which involves countable union, which is also true. Uh, the pre-image is interchangeable with the countable union. We conclude that the countable union. We conclude that the countable union is also. Belong also belongs to this the collection R. So we conclude. We conclude that. Mm, that the. The union like this in this collection and that that's enough to conclude that actually that the R the collection R is a sigma ring so look what we observe on one hand we see that the semi ring of half open intervals is a subset of this collection on the other hand we also know that this collection by itself is a uh, is a sigma ring by the sole definition of the Borel sigma algebra, or Borel sigma, yes, Borel sigma algebra, we know that Borel sigma algebra is simply the minimal sigma ring enveloping the semi ring. Because it's minimal, it must be within any other sigma ring enveloping S. And this R, this particular R collection, it's, it is such sigma ring enveloping the original semi ring. That's why the Borel sigma algebra, which is the minimal enveloping sigma ring, will be inside this given enveloping sigma ring and in particular every element of the Borel sigma algebra will be like so. So the pre-image of it 
of every such element will be measurable. That's why we see 5. Now the last step in this presentation is the implication of 5 to 1. This is the easiest of all because we just observed that, this, that the set f bigger than c simply the pre-image of this particular chosen Borel set. And that's why it is measurable because this is a Borel set.